Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs, and in this video we're going to take a look at dictionaries inside of MS Excel VBA work. And so dictionaries are just another way we can store data um, while we're using it in our code. And by store data I'm just saying in memory, not actually writing it to a file or writing it to a database. And so previously we looked at arrays, and for the arrays everything was based off of where the element was in the array itself. So say we had a 1D array, in order to access a specific element, it would be helpful to know the actual location of it within the array. We did that with indexes. Well, dictionary is a little bit different. It's not so much the order they're in, but they're all based on this idea of a key and an item that's stored with it. And so if I know the key, I can get the item associated with it. And so that's more of the logic inside of a dictionary. Um, you can kind of think of it as like a phone book. Um, maybe if I know the person's name, that would be the key, and then I can look up the item being their, their number itself here, uh, that being the phone number. Uh, in this case, let's look at it a little bit differently. Let's say our keys are the ID numbers associated with students, and then the item we're looking for is the student name. Uh, conceivably, you could also switch these around if you wanted to. And so one of the things you have to know with in order to work with dictionaries is that you have to have an add-in, essentially. Um, you have to have a reference to this Microsoft scripting runtime. And so to do that, um, just come in here to Excel. You can go to Tools, References. and come down in your references to where it would be Microsoft scripting runtime. Everything should be in alphabetical order. So get down here to the M's. Um, we're at MV. So here are the MC's. And right here you can see is Microsoft scripting runtime. And so I'll click it and hit OK. Uh, basically what that does is allow us to use the, the dictionary itself because it's stored in that runtime library. And so why would you use dictionaries? Um, first, it's got dynamic length built into there, so I can add and remove items uh, just like in a dynamic array. Um, but I can also do some more things to it. Um, I can check if a key exists. And so maybe you're entering data and you want to say, okay, if this key exists, don't rewrite it. But if the key does not exist, then add something new. And also one of the things you can do is change the value of an existing item. And so you say you have a student ID number, uh, you've already got a name associated with it, but you entered that name in wrong, and now you need to locate that ID number and change the name itself there. Um, both those last two items you can see are things that collections cannot do. Um, collections I'll do in a different video, and just another way to store data as well. And so with that little bit of background in place, let's go ahead and start working with it in Excel. Um, so I'll just do public sub dictionary test as a subroutine and the first thing we'll do is we'll declare a variable so we'll say dim dict as dictionary and then I'll say set dict equal to new dictionary now since we have an object one thing I'm doing is I'm declaring a dictionary variable and then I have to set that variable equal to a new instance of the dictionary object which I'm doing in that second line and so now that we have a dictionary um, we can use it to store some data. And so I'm going to use a with statement here in order to shorten them out that I have to write. And so I'm going to say with dict dot, well, let's add something. When I add something, it wants to know the key and then the item. So I'll just do it with references. Uh, key colon equals um, an ID number. So we'll say 001, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, we'll say. And then we'll say comma item colon equals somebody's name, so Billy. Billy has the ID number 123. Um, let's add a few more in here. Let's say 456, a key, and that is Trevor. And we'll colon equals 789, the key, and that'll be the string Dylan. All right, uh, so there's a dictionary populating with a few items in here. Notice each item has a key, or excuse me, each element of the dictionary has a key and an item associated with it. And so if I go ahead and run this subroutine down to the end sub here and put my dict variable in the watch, you can see I have an item and it's showing me the keys here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I wanted to know the item associated with the key. Um, I can do something like debug.print dict and then I put in the key value, so one, two, three. And so if I run this out, 
Notice it prints Billy in the results window because Billy is tied to the key 123, um, which is nice. Um, one thing we can do is check if a certain thing exists. And so we can say something if dict.key if dict.exist, excuse me, and then it puts the key in here, if it dot one, two, three, oh, let's go four, five, six this time, then else and if will debug dot print found key. Else debug dot print not found. And so when this runs through, I'll come to the breakpoint here. We'll run through it. It's going to test the dictionary and say, well, does the key 456 exist? And in this case, it does. Hit F8. It executes here. And of course, we're out at this point. And so we're able to test it. Uh, maybe you want to go through here and test if it exists and then remove it if you do find it. That can be something that you're trying to do. And I can say, well, dict.remove. Remove the thing with a key. Well, that's the same 456 key. And we'll go ahead and take that out and see what happens. And so F5 here. Notice at this point in my watch, I've got three items in the dictionary. Three elements in the dictionary. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine are the individual items. It's going to test if it exists, and if it finds it, it's going to remove it. And so notice here, the count went down to two, and it removed Looks like Trevor from the index itself there. Uh, so that's one thing you can do is to check if it exists. Uh, maybe we don't want to delete it, but we want to change it. We say, well, Trevor was his first name. He goes by his middle name, which is Mike. And so I can say, okay, if I find it, then we'll say dict dot, or excuse me, dict of 456. We'll just enter the key that way. Is now equal to Mike. And so we'll change it in this case. And so we can see this run through. F5 here runs it. Now I currently have it as these three. That's not going to show us it there. So let's go ahead and just print it. And so how am I going to print it? I'll go right here. Debug.print. And I'll say dict456. And so this will be before we change it and then after we change it. There we go. We'll remove everything out of the results window and we'll go step through. Alright, so first we're going to check if it exists, which it should. We're going to print out the current value. Now we're going to set it to a new value and then we're going to print out the, the second value there. And so now all of a sudden we've changed the item associated with the 456 key from Trevor to Mike, um, which is some nice functionality. Um, one thing you might want to do is loop through this afterwards. And so we can say something then key as variant. And so we can say for each key in dict dot, it's got a keys collection now, next key. And then we can say something along the lines of debug dot print dict of key. And so what this should do is go through and print it out. I'll go ahead and comment these prints out. So it's just the prints in the for loop being executed at the end. Um, just like so. Hit F5, it ran through. And now we've got Billy. Remember, Mike gets changed. And then we've got Dylan in there as well as the names. Uh, if we wanted to, we should be able to do something like new.print this and comma and key. Give us the, the keys associated with them as well. I'll go ahead and run that as well. And so now you can see the name, comma, space, and then the individual keys. And those keys can be, for instance, ID numbers there. And so I think we've got everything um, that we need to show here. We've got a few other examples um, where I'm doing similar stuff. We've looked at populating a dictionary, accessing an element via a key. We've done that as well. Uh, we've checked if a key exists, and then we've iterated through the key as well, and we've changed an item there. Um, as usual, this is the, the reference I'm using for some of the background information associated with these concepts. And so thanks for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this helps you at least get an understanding of how keys work in dictionaries and basically how the dictionary uh, functions there. And you can use that to start uh, storing 
data in memory um, so you have an easier way to reference it with your code. And so thanks again for watching the video.